Hello, everyone. <coughs> My name is Kai Youssef. Uh, I work with the Pixel kernel team on the perf and power management. And before that, I was working with ARM as well with a similar topic. And today, I want to talk with you about how can we make the scheduler more debuggable. Uh, I think it's a common problem that people come into, whether you are a user or a kernel developer, uh, you run into an issue and you always wonder, how can I get to the bottom of this problem and root cause it properly? And if you want to report a problem as well, you don't know where to start with to ask people like, hey, I have a problem. What kind of information I should send? There is no standard way to do all of that. And my goal over here is actually to, to set up some, some kind of methodology. Like the main problem I'm stuck with is for the wake up path and the load balancer path. How can we annotate them properly? I've done some work, so I'll go th quickly through what I've done to improve the current situation. Uh, but hopefully we can, at the end, discuss like these particular two problems. Uh, as an example, first, of like issues that come into the wild is like, this is from a Pixel device where, from a real bug report where, as you can see, there is almost 600 millisecond latency for a task that was in queued and it never got to run for some reason. And this is not reproducible. If you want to debug this, it's like what kind of information you can add enough so that when you finally hit it, you are for certain, know that you have enough information. And if when you report this as well, the similar problem. What do, you, what, do, what, what do I send other than that? There's a clearly a bug somewhere in the scheduler over here that basically caused this problem. Where it is, it's, it's very hard to find it very easily. Another problem I ran into with the load balancer while discussing with Vincent about uh, the effective affinity, uh, increasing the load balance interval. So that task is affined to CPU zero, and once I remove the affinity at that point of time, you would expect it to migrate to a big core immediately. But there is a 600 millisecond delay, and I still have no clue why this happens. Although this is, this is reproducible, but I don't know. And then I start thinking, we really need to annotate this code. <laughs> That's the easiest way to start really finding uh, solutions to all these bugs. So what we need really over here is like kind of a common language that people can be used to talk to each other and like whether you are just a bug reporter or an actual developer you can easily like say uh, I have this information use them we tend to have our own custom debugging done and you have to spend a lot of time to explain what you have done to other people in terms of debugging mind you to explain the problem itself and you end up with people complaining about just like with very generic like I have bad latencies or I have some some random problem but there is actually more more into it that is very hard to understand and things I'm looking on is something like PR debug, but of course not like PR debug. I really want to have like very good annotation. So what I've been doing like for a while, like I've had this kid analyzer tool. It uses like all existing infrastructure, Ftrace, BPF, and Perfetto, which I hope people are familiar with, and Pandas. Perfetto is kind of uh, uh, like started from Chrome, I think. It's a way to have like a system-wide uh, like analysis and visualization. It has. SDK, so that, that's how I hooked into it. So applications themselves can emit their events and you can see what's happening inside the kernel as well. And it's basically just a glue logic and I'm surprised actually it worked because I, I can have a static binary that has BPF objects, C objects, C++, C++ objects, and it runs. <laughs> and it runs in Android, which doesn't have any JPC stuff that I depend on, and it can run in any system, hopefully even if it's embedded and doesn't have like any of the sophisticated libcs that I rely on. So one of the things over here is like, which helped me a lot in my next topic with talking about the performance, like uh, management res response time. It's like looking at all the pilt signals, load average, thermal average, wall, all, you name them, youth list. You can easily capture them and just load them into Perfetto and you can see them. And because they are visualized with other events, you can, if you have a point of interest, you can easily overlap all the information together. So you can easily see like at that particular point of time, very easily visually see like what was the state of other things and say like is my frequency right this should this should this stack has been running on a big core instead of mid core or does the utilization say something else like why what that decision was made and like i've used the new ipi events which added by valentine over here thanks for that uh, like to also like visualize like some people were like complaining about ipis causing some problems with waking up idle cores so i told them okay you can easily do that. So when you see a wake up event and like with the new stuff, you can see the call sites and the callbacks that being called. And again, because this is visual, if you have, once you identified your point of interest in the trace, so you can easily visually rather than look at just text, random text without any um, correlation with what's happening at the same point of time. So you can easily correlate this with other 
and look at information. And here, the load balancer, which is the most important thing like I try to do. So I've, I've cooked up something, but it's not really good, and that's what I want to improve. So I can easily extract information like over here, like overloaded, overutilized, and like I have a bunch of other signals, so you can see what's happening. And I've added over here like a kind of a call stack by hooking into the entry of the functions and try to put them and emit some extra debug information at the moment what CPU is running, but I need to improve in that really. But this is not really enough. What I want over here is basically see per CPU, like once we enter the load balancer, and inside every function, is it like doing a misfit load balance? Is it doing an overload, like load, like, uh, what, we have different types of load balancers be happening. Why they are happening, what's the decision, if we build out, why we have build out, what was happening. So at least the problem that I've encountered in the past, if I hit it, I can look at this information easily and say like, hey, it's not being pulled, and at least there is some, is this working as intended, or is there a bug somewhere? So it's easy to, to tell. And well, I, I also like have like some provision for TUIs, so you can actually produce some information that you can send them on the list. So yeah, yeah, they're nice. So that hopefully will make communication easier. You can, you can just like with your email see yeah. what's happening. And actually something really nice that I would like to highlight. So when you look at that one, it says ramp up CPU for the frequency. So what I've done over here, I've combined the CPU frick information with the task running information and overlapping. So what I see here is the frequency as seen by the task when it's running. So like every time it, it's, it's the, the scheduler set it as the task running, I just basically see the frequency as it changing. So you get actually to see so as... Uh, so you can point to bottom right? Yeah, these two. So, the, so like this task was running. So start that, that's one, and that's the frequency while it was running, and then it moved to the CPU. So you can see this, like empty, this means that task was not running over here. So that's, so like this information, if it stopped running, then we see. And all these as well, like residency information are based on this one. And you can as well, Zoom in, zoom out, so you can set the starting and end, so you can zone to, to zoom to the point of interest, which is like over here, to actually get proper residencies and information, which helped me quite a lot to analyze some of the problems that have been hitting. And it's shareable nonetheless, that's the most important things, and hopefully we can add more. So the current limitation I'm running into is that hooking into entry and exit function is quite hard because the scheduler is very heavily inlined. Uh, I cannot get access to everything. And lots of information are actually not happening at entry function. It's happening somewhere. So like inside the function, there are several decision points and if conditions that change the flow of the whole tree of, 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 of like decision making. And we want to follow that decision making tree so that we can actually understand what's going on. Um, And so we want to add something extra. <laughs> and here, like, to be honest, like, I'm, where I'm looking for feedback. I have some ideas that I'm working on currently, so I'll go quickly through it. So Perfetto, like, have something called trace event. It's not related to K like F trace. it's a different trace event, but it's very similar. And that's how I used to create this IPI and load balancer. It basically has, like, a key, uh, like that, like uh, a key value pair. So like it says like a string, this is the debug information, which is like the CPU I had in the past, and like the value, which is like what CPU was running. So we can add easily like, um, like whatever information we want, like load balancer type, and like add the type, and add utilization, or whatever inf extra information we want as a, a key value pair. And I, I'm currently testing this proposal. Um, so I'm thinking to add something like called declare trace path. So like here you have the, the, the name. So like over here you declare trace path, for instance, select task RQ fair, because that's what we want to trace. And another one called trace path, which takes the same name over here. So this is like, for instance, use it. And this is an example of a key value pair. Like you add like wake flags and you pass the wake flags. So you see like I've entered task RQ and it's, and like these are the current values that I'm seeing. This is for demonstrations, that's not actually what actually we want to add. Um, and I'm hoping that will get, allow us to annotate like the, the call tree like without having any API issues because that should be just a trace, like this is a simple trace, uh, like trace function. The same trace function we want for trace events. So these are tra bare trace points. Uh, in the declare path, we have like what I call a phase, which is basically if you want to take the trace, like the whole path as like going through phases of the decision tree. 
And this is like the debug name and value. So I've taken three debug name and values. And as the phase, I just use the function name. So like whatever function we are on over here. So what I do when I try to figure out what the load balancer does is, is um, I put a trace print K right after we collect, for example, a scat domain stats, and then I print out all the statistics we have there, and then I can follow the decisions it makes. Um, so you think we can just add that as a standard way to do it, like the trace print K, there is no need well, for annotation? I mean, I always use trace print K in awk. Yeah, it, it's a pain <laughs> but the, the question ass, is that not, not yeah. many people know what to add. So like, if it is always there, even uh, protected um, by something. Recently, I mean, we have a similar problem, for example, for deadline, because we don't annotate anything of the you know, runtime. And for example, working on proxy execution, you don't know, it's hard to follow who's donating to, to whom, and this kind of thing. So I don't know if we find a way to, I don't know, make it more formal and we agree yeah, on Yeah, standard annotation, be. that's always yeah. so, there. You just so, ask people right. to use so it. So the question is, what's exposed to user space? I mean, for, for these things. When you do this, how I does user, does user space not see any of this? It's just like no, a, no. it's just basically like a declare trace, uh, this trace is, of it. This will be basically trace, just a trace, like a trace like a skid wake up, for instance, we have. So it will be like trace, okay, so, select task RQ fair with these arguments, and then you hook right, into them so, with PPF, I basically so, I mean, extract this why information. Why can't you just put, because we have several trace points in the, that trace point, okay, a trace point is the thing, is the call or the hook mechanism into the kernel. A trace event is the macro that we have that exposes it in trace of S. Uh, what's it's this, how is this event. different, well, how is this different point. than, what? This is a trace point, not an event. Yeah, yeah, so oh, basically, yeah, but oh, would this just make the trace point and, but just not expose it to, um, it's just no. basically, it will basically be a function call with these arguments. Yeah, but that's what a trace point that's, is. Yes, that's a trace point. But no, like saying, then I can hook into it. Yeah, so what I'm saying is this would make a trace point at the location. Yes, correct. Oh, so, okay, so you make a trace point, okay, and that you can hook into... At that location with custom debug information exposed, just as a standard so, way. So basically it's kind of like making a macro that describes thing and like the defined path there, like where, okay, so this is like added by what, a module? Like what, how do you do the hook into it? Uh, with the P because this will be or this BPF. will generate a trace select task RQ fair right mm -hmm. and uh, like this that's why the declare trace path it has a specific function signature over here so like it has the phase and the three like like key pair values so, so like the, the the trace point so, the function signature is, is fixed basically with phase so key how pair is this value. different than a trace point yeah. it is a trace point no how is this it's, different than a trace point it's just making it standard. Okay, so the question I think, maybe I'm trying to translate this thing on the sort, the same question I have. Similar to how we have sked switch, why don't you add sked load balancer A, spit out whatever information you want to do. Why are you trying to do something different instead of just creating a trace point with whatever function names or whatever thing you're trying to expose? Because I think if I understand correctly, debug name, it's like the string that you can keep replacing. So Is that how we implement it? To have it's like this trace path will be called on so many times in the select task RQ, like across all the tree, because you, you could end up sometimes in select idle sibling, you could end up sometimes in find energy CPU, you could end up sometimes in some other function. You don't know that's called sometimes, but not called sometimes. So you will add this across all the path with, with that select task RQ fair being the only common, but the debug information. And that will create a specific function signature that I can hook into and generate easily like kind of a call stack. So, so the reason we don't do extra trace events is because people start to rely on them and then we change the code and they don't make sense no, they, and then we up a creek. No, no, this is, no, I know. Yeah. Uh, this looks like a single trace point, sorry. This looks like a single trace point is being emitted in the code. And then you use it as a kitchen sink and mocks various string phase on this. So you lose the ability to individually select specific trace points. And then at runtime, you basically filter on strings. So why don't you just emit many trace points, one per phase? Um, I just 
wonder, like, what is your experience? I mean, normally, when I try to figure out some kind of, I mean, I've also looked at lots of load balancing problems, I try to figure it out, and I have some specific concerns, and I want to pr print some specific information in some specific place, and it seems like if, to what I understand, then you're deciding some more certain specific places where it's useful to print information, but it might not be the ones that correspond to what my interest is or something. I mean, I'm sort of more in the well, line I, I, of let's just print everything. That could be a perfectly useful solution. I, yeah, I think that the idea over here is that to have like something in kernel that's annotating all the time and people can use, but to keep the API safe, it's just basically be a series of function calls across the path with that extra debug so we so, can easily change so, them. So why not stick in trace points right after we generate get domain stats and get group stats and just pass in the pointer to those structures and then Stuff can do whatever it wants. BPF can hook into it. I mean, you've got the BTF crap these days that yeah. can extract fields from. Is this enough? Structures. Because I think we need a few of them in different. Because the problem, at least when I try to look at this, because that's the first approach I try to go with. But I found that it's, it's like I need a lot of them in different places that could be different things. And I need the code to tell me what that thing. So, uh, for instance, like in the load balancer, so I need, or the wake up path because I can remember more of the code from that. So like, I need to have one for find energy efficient CPU and dig all the way to compute energy and any other function calls it does, which I have no clue to be honest how many they do. And you need a different trace point for each one. But this one is just, we have one trace point, but you just basically pass different information to it. But, yeah, but this, is, this is string, so you don't want stringification and all that stuff. Um, mm -hmm. So the regular load balancer, you have these two data structures, domain stats and group stats, and, and printing, or just passing a pointer to them should be enough to follow most of the decisions made afterwards. The, the EAS path, I'm not up to date on. But. No, but I think maybe you want to, in the update, pick busiest to know why. I mean, I think you want yeah, but details. Then you, like, then you yeah. give the, the yeah. two pointers, the, the old busiest yeah. and the new one, and then you can follow along again. No, but yeah, I mean, it's not only once you have selected the busiest, but mm -hmm. also why. Yeah. So we, we, you need, or we need, a number of trace points all over the place. Exactly. But I agree with you that just a trace point and then provide the, the most meaningful structure pointer and then do whatever you want behind that. Is this the same yeah. we already have in health? Yeah, something, uh, yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean, like I said, I still rather, I don't know if I want to build another structure over it, but, I mean, because, but having a trace point is fine, but I mean, then you can be able to hook something, you can hook your stuff on top of it. So maybe have somebody else, but I wouldn't want this in the thing, because that sounds like it kind of limits what the scheduler has itself. That's my fear. Uh, you mean? I mean, I mean what, the, what the debuggability of the scheduler, it means what information we get from the scheduler, I don't want that limited. I'd rather have like a generic something trace point, and then, you be able to add, it, like you said, right now you That's have like the goal. I mean, I could fail over here. That's why I'm looking for feedback. But that's my idea, current idea, to be honest. But I'm not stuck into it. Well, I <laughs> Just to be offline, clear. I can talk to you because I think we yeah. are. We have one minute left. So, any other concerns? So uh, it's a uh, if we only for the uh, debugging, uh, you can also use that or something like a uh, uh, the function. If it is a function. Uh, entry or something like that, you can use that uh, K-probes or any uh, F-probes to uh, dy uh, dynamically adding the, the, the events. Uh, and we add it very accurately to a specific line of code. Yes, yes, you can. OK, so maybe we need to learn more about that. Yeah. I, I would like it to be part of the kernel that we ship yeah. so that so, yeah, I, mean, yeah, I don't want them to rely on my right. tool. Yeah, I mean, so it's my way for the We have at least a baseline to start yeah. with. Yeah. So, but I think trace points in the right spot might be a good place, and we need to move off from that. Okay. But anyway, time's up. So, okay. thank you. Thank you.